Moving on to the next example, we're going to do a word problem in this video dealing with limits. So we have a fish population in thousands at time t years and it's modeled by this piecewise function here. A chemical spill at t equals 3 kills some of the fish. And with that scenario, we have to find these four things. So the limit as t approaches 3 from the negative side of this function, the limit as t approaches 3 from the positive side of this function, the number of fish killed by the spill, and then the last thing is the time when the population recovers to the level before the spill. So if we take this piecewise function and graph it, we end up with this here. So let me explain it briefly. So we start off at a time value of zero, and the fish population is growing according to this function here, three plus t squared. So that's just a parabola that opens up. So it's growing, growing, growing all the way to time three. And then at time three, a chemical spill occurs. So a bunch of the population is killed. And then at time three or after time three, the population is modeled by this function here. And this is an exponential function. Notice this parent function two to the power of t here. So the population after time three is modeled by this function and it keeps growing, growing, growing all the way to time seven to which that piece of this whole population is defined. So now that we have the graph, let's answer these questions. What's the limit as t approaches three of this function from the negative side? Well, as we approach three, from the negative side of this function, we're going up this curve here, this three plus t squared. And to find the y value that we approach as we approach three from the negative side, from the left side, we would just plug in three into this function here. So we'd have three squared, which is nine plus three, so it's 12. And because this is in thousands, we know that the population of the fish at a time value of three just before the spill is 12,000. So the limit of this function as we approach three from the negative side is equal to this value of 12. So we can put 12 here for that first answer. Now what about the second question? The limit as t approaches three from the positive side of this function. Well, as we approach three from the positive side, we have to go down this curve here, which is represented by this piece here, this function, this one over eight, two to the power of t plus four. So as we approach three from the positive side, what y value are we approaching? Well, we would just take three and plug it into this equation. So if we do that, Two to the power of three is eight. Eight times one over eight is one, and then one plus four would give us five. So the limit of this function as we approach three from the positive side is equal to five. Now, what do these limits actually represent in this scenario? Well, this first limit here represents the population of the fish just before the spill. So we can say that this is the population before the spill. The fish population was 12,000. And then right after the spill, the population is 5,000, which is this limit here, the right-sided limit. So if the population before the spill was 12,000 and then it went down to 5,000, then we can answer the third question. The number of fish killed by the spill well, it's just 12 minus five, but since it's in thousands, we know that there were 7,000 fish killed by the spill. And to solve our fourth question, the time when the population recovered to the level before the spill. So basically, we're looking for when did the population get back to that level of 12,000. So we're looking for the T coordinate of this curve here, when the y value is equal to 12, which is the level of the population just before the spill. We wanna know when does it get back to that level, at what time. And to solve for that, because this curve here is represented by this equation, we can just make this equation equal to 12 and then solve for t, and that would give us the t value for which 
the population returns to that level. So if we take 12 and make it equal to that equation, so we got 1 over 8, 2 to the power of t plus 4, now we can just solve for t. So we would first bring the 4 over, so 12 minus 4 is 8, and then we got 1 over 8, 2 to the power of t, divide both sides by 1 over 8 to get rid of this 1 over 8 here. So 8 divided by 1 over 8 is 64, and that's equal to 2 to the power of t. And then 64 we can uh, change into a base of 2 to the power of 6. And then that's equal to 2 to the power of t. Now since the bases are the same, we can just drop them, so we know that t is equal to 6. So at six years, that's when the population returns to that level before the spill of 12,000. So the answer to this fourth question is at time six. So in conclusion, overall, not too bad of a question. The trickiest part is probably graphing these uh, piecewise functions. So if you want, you should maybe go do a review if you're a little rusty with graphing piecewise function from advanced functions. I would suggest just perhaps maybe making a table for each of these. So making a table for t values from zero to three for this function here and then making a table of values from three to seven for the t values for this function here, and then just plotting the points. But if you do that, this is the sort of shape you'll get for the piecewise function. And then once you have the graph, everything sort of makes sense. It's easy to see visually how to answer these questions. The fourth question was a little tricky because you have to know the population just before the spill, so you'd have to find that population of 12 by plugging in 3 into that first um, equation, and we solve that in the first question. But once you have that initial population, or that population before the spill, you just make that population equal to that second function, and then just solve for t. So overall, not too bad. Also, be careful that this here, the p, is represented in thousands. So when they ask you for the number of fish killed by the spill, you don't just put seven, you have to put 7,000. But when you're solving for t, here in the fourth question, you don't put 12,000, you just put a value of 12 and solve for t. So overall, it's not too bad. There should be questions like this similar to your textbook, so make sure you do those and you can follow this video as a reference. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.